everybody. Welcome back to Serving Up Plumbing with David Butler. Today, we're gonna to be talking about part two of recirculation pumps, dedicated loop pumps. In a previous one, we talked about comfort pumps. But before we get into that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. All right, let's talk about hot water recirculation. Well, as I mentioned previously in another video, there's basically three types of recirculating pumps. We've got your dedicated loop pump, which we're gonna be talking about today. We've got your comfort pump, which is a retrofit system, and we've got the Taco demand system or a demand system. Taco just happens to be one of the first inventors of it. Now, let's talk about dedicated loops. What is a dedicated loop? Well, a dedicated loop recirculating system is installed when the home is built 99.9% .9 of the time. Now you can retrofit a dedicated loop, but it's just like having to reroute a water line through the attic if you had a slab leak or something like that. So it's much more detailed to add a dedicated loop line than it is to retrofit with something like a comfort pump. The dedicated loop is by far the best hot water recirculating system you can get. So how does it work? You have a loop that goes from the very furthest fixture all the way back to your pump. Now, a lot of these are installed incorrectly on residential homes. Commercial plumbers, they do them by an engineered drawing, so they really can't screw it up. But with residential plumbers, most of them have never done very many recirculating systems or done them by an engineered drawing, so they really don't understand the concept of them. The point is, you're taking a hot water line from the water heater to the very furthest point just in a series of loops in a pathway. You don't wanna go off that path. You go all the way to that furthest point, whether it be a sink at the far end, maybe it's your kitchen sink on the opposite side of the house from your water heater. A lot of water heaters are in the garage, right? The kitchen sink's the furthest point, or maybe it's the master shower or master bath that is the furthest point away. That water goes all the way to that furthest point, and then we bring one single pipe, uninterrupted. You can't come off of it with any other fixture on the way back. The furthest point, you bring one single pipe all the way back to the water heater, and there's a pump right there that moves water through that line. So it's constantly pulling hot water through that pipe right up to the furthest point and all the way back to your water heater. Now, a lot of things about this. The most important thing about it is it's a luxury, right? It's a comfort that we get. We can have hot water the minute we turn the faucet on. Now, it is efficient in that you don't waste any hot water. It's not so efficient in that it takes a lot of energy, either gas or electricity, to maintain that loop being hot. So, some of the pumps have timers on them, some don't. What does a dedicated pump look like? This is what a dedicated pump would look like in general. Not all of them are flanged, but this pump happens to be a flanged pump. Majority of them are flanged though. This is a different brand. It's flanged also, if you'll notice. These are dedicated loop recirculating pumps. Now we had talked before about the comfort systems. The comfort system has its own kind of pump. They are not interchangeable. I've seen it done by plumbers, but they don't work correctly. Grunfos pumps are a different type of pump. They can run static, which means no water can be moving. Dedicated loop pumps, like we're talking about here, they have to have water movement. If they get air trapped in them, or they have the water shut down and you don't unplug your pump, that pump will burn up. So one thing you always need to know, make sure and unplug your pump if you're ever gonna shut your water down or turn off your hot water, at least if you're gonna turn off the flow of hot water. You can turn the tank down, the temperature on it, or you can turn the tank to off, but if you turn off the water to the water heater, make sure you unplug your recirculating pump also. They do make timers for recirculating pumps, and these can make it more efficient. The only downside to a timer is most of our timers for pumps are 24-hour timers. Well, we don't live on a 24-hour schedule all the time, do we? We have seven days a week. Most of our five-day weeks are a little different schedule than our weekends, right? So if you set the timer for 24 hours and you have the water going on and off at certain times of the day, maybe you go out and party all night on Friday night and you come in late and you wanna take a late shower. Well, if your pump is shut off at midnight and you're at home at two o'clock, now it's gonna take you a long time to get hot water. If you turn the pump off during the day to save energy while you're at work, on Saturdays you're home all day. If you take a late shower because you slept in, you're gonna be waiting on hot water. So it's kinda of tricky doing timers on pumps. A lot of times you can have customers unhappy with you if you're a plumber, or as a homeowner, you could be unhappy if your water's not hot all the time. So you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of efficiency 
but most of the time we end up leaving our pumps running all the time. On tankless water heaters that have the pumps built in, they control the pump. That pump will actually kick on and off based on the return hot water temperature. You can add other things like an aquastat that will turn the pump off when the hot water gets hot in the line. And as it cools down, it will kick the pump back on. So there's several things you can do. But the most important thing about a dedicated loop pump is you get on-demand hot water right away. And that's hot as it comes out of the tank. You don't have to do like with a comfort pump of waiting on the water to get fully hot. Even though it's warm when it comes out on a comfort pump, it's not fully hot. On a dedicated loop pump, generally, it's full temperature within seconds after you turn the faucet on. And that's the big advantage to a dedicated loop. Remember, you cannot interchange these pumps. You cannot put a comfort pump on a dedicated loop or vice versa. They will not operate properly and you're just gonna end up with a system that doesn't work right and possibly having to replace a pump. So that kind of explains what the dedicated loop does. Now let's talk a little bit more about how to install them. These pumps generally will go right at your water heater. What is the direction of flow? Circulating pumps that are dedicated loop pumps always have the arrow of flow going into the water heater. The arrow should be pointing towards the water heater that it's going into. You can see right here, they have an arrow on the pump right here. That arrow needs to be pointing towards the water heater in order for it to operate properly. It will not work right if it goes the other way. You also need a check valve on the recirculation line. That's the dedicated line that's coming all the way back from the furthest fixture. There should be a check valve there. If it's horizontal, it can be a swing check. Personally, I prefer really good quality spring checks. They can be installed vertical or they can be installed horizontal. What does that spring check do or swing check? That prevents water from going in reverse. Water takes the easiest path. For lack of a better word, we kind of say water's lazy. It's going to go the easiest path it can go. And sometimes, if we don't have a check valve in there, the water will actually travel from the water heater back down the recirc loop in the reverse flow direction, and that will make your water get a little bit cooler than it should. And maybe at that shower or whatever fixture you've got it at, now you're only getting lukewarm water when before you were getting scalding hot water. In fact, that's one troubleshooting tip you can always know. If you have a dedicated loop recirculating system and you have a fixture at the far end of the house from the water heater that is getting lukewarm water, the first thing you should always check is your check valve. Of course, you wanna check your pump, make sure your pump's working, but even if the pump's not working, your check valve should keep the water from going backwards. And the reason that happens is because the dip tube comes in to the bottom of the heater. And oftentimes we pipe the recirculation line back into the bottom of our heater where our drain is. This lets the cold water be right at the inlet of the recirc line coming back to the heater. It makes it very easy for the cold water to go backwards through the recirculating loop. So remember that if you're a plumber out there or a homeowner and you're having this problem, check your recirculating line. If when you turn on that far faucet, it gets cold, your check valve's not working. Or maybe it doesn't have a check valve, and if it doesn't, install a check valve, right? And as I said, I prefer spring checks. They'll work vertical or horizontal, and they do a very good job. Most spring checks or swing checks are only gonna last you five to 10 years. They usually will not last the life of the water heater before they have to be repaired or replaced. Most of them you have to replace. We're still talking about installation of the pumps now. I gave you a little tip on troubleshooting. Now understand, we were talking about the pumps need to have the arrow pointing towards the water heater, also, you can install these pumps vertical or horizontal, going straight up and down. Now, the one thing you can't do, this pump should never be installed with the motor pointing down or the motor pointing up. This has bearings under it. That motor should be out to the side like that. It can be vertical like this. It can be horizontal. But you don't want the pump upside down and you don't want the pump motor right side up. It has to be this way. So, make sure the orientation on your pump is correct. We were talking about it has bearings. Those bearings will wear out on the motor if it's not cradled in the bearings properly, okay? Last but not least, the flanges and the gasket. We have brass flanges on our pumps, sometimes stainless steel. We were talking about the pumps come flanged. Now there are other connections. Some of the pumps have a union type connection. Some of them have a solder type connection. But by and far, most plumbers and most places we used flanged pumps. So we have the flanges. We also have to have a gasket to go between that pump and the flange. Now, this is called a full face rubber gasket. This is called a ring gasket. Either one of these work just fine. Sometimes this will come with your 
flange set, this one usually comes with your pump. You do not ever want to use them together. You only use one at a time, never together. This one is a little easier to use because it holds itself in place by the bolts. This one, you kind of have to make sure and be very careful to keep it in place. If you get it in place wrong, it's going to have a leak but it still works just fine as long as it's installed correctly. So you can use either the full face or the ring gasket, whichever one you have available, you could use a combination of them. You could use a full face on one side of the pump, a ring gasket on the other. It will work just fine. It's just about how you install it and make sure you get that gasket aligned correctly. Also make sure that if you have old flanges in there, you clean them well. Just a tiny little bit of trash or corrosion that gets between the gasket and the flange, can cause you to have a leak, and nobody wants to have a leak. If it's a slow leak, you may not know about it until it's already done too much damage. So, make sure you check everything for leaks after you do this. So that's how we install it. We make sure the orientation's right, we make sure our flange gaskets are right, we make sure that it has a check valve on it, and last but not least, now we're ready to turn the water on, right? Let's turn the hot water on. But one of the most important things you can do, you can do all of the other things correct, but if you don't do this step, you're gonna have a problem and you may burn your pump up. What am I talking about? Purging the air out of the system. How do we do it? Well, I have some plumbers that actually install a purge valve between the water heater and the pump. This is outstanding. It's an excellent way to do it. But not too many guys do that, and then some of them don't wanna do it. That'll get all the air out of the pump. Because remember, I said you've got to be careful. This pump cannot run static, which means no water flowing. If you get an air bubble trapped in this pump, it causes what we call cavitation. And it superheats and gets really hot, and then it burns up your pump. No water is moving when this happens. It's kind of like a blood clot that happens to you. If it travels to your pump or your heart, it can be deadly. If it travels to your pump, it can be deadly to your pump. So, how do we purge it? Start at the closest hot water fixture to the water heater and start opening the hot water valves. Open it up, it'll spit and sputter some air. When it stops spitting and sputtering, turn that valve off and go to the next hot water valve, the next furthest away. If it's a two-story house, do the first floor first, go all the way through, and then do the second floor after you do the entire first floor. And you're gonna wanna start on the second floor directly above the water heater at the closest fixture to the water heater on the second floor. And then work your way to the very furthest fixture away from the water heater, each time opening the hot water faucet only and bleeding all the air out of the system until it doesn't spit and sputter and then close that valve and move on to the next one. In this way, you can get all the air out of the hot water system if you don't install a separate purge valve. A question came to mind. What if your water heater's in the attic? Do you still purge the lines, first floor, then second floor? The answer is yes. Why? Because the air is gonna bubble up or rise in the pipes. So the most air is still gonna be trapped on the second floor. So you're still gonna go down to the first floor and flush everything out of the first floor first, and then go up to the second floor and flush all the pipes on the second floor. I know that seems kinda odd, but you cannot be too careful to make sure you get all the air out. That second floor is still where the air is gonna be trapped the most on your system. I can't even begin to stress how critical this is because as we said, it's like a blood clot. If you don't get that air completely out of the system, it's gonna to travel to the pump, stop up the pump, and when I say stop up, I mean it's gonna stop it from pumping water. The pump's gonna to get too hot and burn up. Not a good thing. And you need to remember to do this, not only when you install a pump, but if you're ever a plumber or homeowner out there working on your water line, if you have to shut the house down and you have a recirculating pump, you wanna make sure and unplug that recirculating pump. You also wanna make sure that after you make that repair, you go up again and you go straight through the purge system again. If it's a two story, you gotta go every one on the first floor, every one on the second floor and get all that air out. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but believe me, in the long run, it'll make your pump last a lot longer. One last thing I want to add about the installation of the pumps. Now, on a tank top water heater is what we're talking about mostly here. Again, nowadays, if you're going to be installing a tankless water heater, I recommend buying a tankless like the X3 that has a pump integrated into the system. It's built into the tankless. It'll work as a comfort pump or a dedicated loop, whatever you've got, or you can use it without the pump altogether. 
but that's the best way to do it because the pump is talking to the computer on the tankless all the time. Now, on a tank type water heater, electric or gas, remember these dedicated loops will work on either one. They don't make any difference. Something you need to think about is how does the recirculating line tie back into the water heater? Well, as you're gonna see in the pictures, you can do it one of two ways. You can either tie the recirculation line back into the bottom of the water heater where the drain valve goes. We just remove the drain valve, add a short pipe extender and a T, put the drain back in, tap in your recirculating loop, and run it right into the bottom of the heater. Most plumbers like to do it this way. It's the easiest way, really. Now, the second way to do it is you actually run the recirc loop back up to the top of the heater and tie it into a T going into the cold water line as it enters back into the heater. If the heaters are run in tandem or parallel where you have more than one heater or even one, two, three, four, you have to tie it in at the top generally. If not, you have to make sure that you do everything parallel on the drain line, just like you do parallel on the water lines for a parallel installation of water heaters. If the water heaters are run in series, you can tie it into the bottom of the second heater. Why would we tie it into the bottom of the second heater? Because when water heaters are run in series, your first water heater does all the work. The second heater is like a storage tank. So if we wanna even out the life of the water heaters, it's much more efficient and better to hook your loop from your research system into the second water heater in series. That way it evens out how much work the water heaters have to do. That second water heater will keep the recirculating loop maintained while the first water heater handles the majority of the heating of the water that you use. If we tie it back into the top, like we were talking about, you have to tee in right before it goes into the cold water line. In this situation, you still have a check valve on the recirculating line, but we also really need to add a check valve on the cold water inlet line before we tie the tee in. Now, if we do this, we've now created a closed system. That means what else do we need to add? We have to add an expansion tank. If there's two heaters, you'll have to put an expansion tank on both heaters if they're in parallel. If they're in series, you can use one expansion tank. If it's a single heater, you still have to have one expansion tank on it. On a 50 gallon, it'll be a two gallon expansion tank, the smaller one. On a tankless, you even need to add a small expansion tank in most cities, even though the manufacturers don't require it. So you can tie in the recirculating loop at the bottom where the drain goes in, or you can take it up to the top and tie it in on the cold water inlet. Both of these ways work perfectly fine. You just have to decide which is gonna be the most efficient and the easiest, best way for you to do it. Taking care of your customer is what it's all about, right? A lot of information goes into a recirculation system. That's why I say, not to anybody's detriment, and I'm not judging any plumbers, it's just a lot of plumbers don't have the opportunity to ever see an engineered drawing of a recirculating system, and a lot of them don't even get installed correctly. You just have to make sure, never bring any fixture off of that loop coming back from that furthest fixture. All right, I hope this has been helpful today. Me personally, I love hot water recirculating systems. I have one at my house. I believe people should install them anytime they can. I believe in not wasting water, not wasting energy, and not wasting time about waiting on a shower to get hot. So if you want one of these, give your local plumber a call, or you can comment about it. And maybe we can hook you up with someone. Either way, thanks for watching Serving Up Plumbing. Make sure and hit that thumbs up if you like this video. Let me have a comment. If you want to comment on something on recirculating systems that I missed, I would love to hear it. And remember, just tell your friends the butler did it.